This is Michelle Anderson. I'm your host for my podcast show, Michelle Anderson Short Stories and Beyond. So here we are starting about to wrap up my seventh season. Can you believe it? I am so thankful and grateful in the name of God. Thank you, Jesus. So here I am about to wrap up this season before I take my summer break. It starts during the summer, which is here in the States. It's from June to August and I come back in September. So this particular today episode is we're returning back to Mole. Mole is my hardest part of my book, Mitch May. I'm a memoir of a past life in ancient Egypt. That's my memoir. And to turn it into a theatrical production because I always saw it as a movie when I wrote that book over 20 years ago now. And it was a journey. And so that led to moments of love in ancient Egypt when I wanted to condense like the title. And here I am. So it's, it's fulfilling in that sense and accomplishment of all that I've done. And here with the podcast, bringing it, all these characters in the forefront. I love writing. I love storytelling. I'm just empowerment. So I hope you enjoy my stories. If you have read my book, I ask that you would go a little step further. And if you love my book, to write a positive review. Thank you so much, and I appreciate that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into this. We're going to talk about a couple of things. Do follow me on social media. Do check out my music, all right? If you love it, share it. And I did a lot of things leading up to this season. I released my NFTs. Do you check that out? You can get that on the blockchain. And Mole World, right? I'm combining all of that into that. My um, songs, particular You Know Me, When Love Was Divine. My album, if you love it, share it. My comments book, that's going to come back. I just had to put that on the side because I had all these other things do- I'm doing. But the comic series, it will return. I love those um, the comic book series. I have another podcast show. I like to always kind of present that. So by having your journey to a success, that's more talking about motivational things you can do. And I have this new, another short story that I wrote out this season, and that's the Mole Love Groove. So it's a new short story, Modern Times. You, it's this new characters, Dama and um, Cynthia, and they're just going on this new journey. So definitely check that out. That was last month, and it's connected to my YouTube channel that I just do a playlist jamming, you know, with your boo and. It's called the Mole Love Groove. So you'll see that on the youtube.com forward slash Mole. And um, we did talk about the NFTs, but to kind of hone on that, I have a Discord. It's about the pyramids, you know, Pyramid Mystery Temple Reunion. It's wonderful. That's like even more stories. So definitely connect with that. And this particular episode, we're going to get into episode 66, and this is Molay Short Stories. That episode is titled, for today, Rula in response to the position of King Milan speech as an Hawaiian sets a new path. So we got two things going on today that we're going to focus on leading up to next month, which is my finale. I always do my finale in May before my summer break, okay? All right, I think I covered everything, and my brands, you'll see that listed in the description area. And with that, we're going to kind of get into the last finale where King Milan did his speech in Pleiadians. And it was about him asking for support to identify what that big incident that happened right the war the battle and you get a you get an understanding of that in episode one which goes all the way back to when i started my podcast which was in 2017 he's now asking for help and understanding that there's people in high places that was a part of it need to figure out who it was they need to be held accountable so that's what that was and now we fast forward to it gets back to Tama. Tama is another name for Earth. And Rulin, this particular character, he comes in in the earlier episodes. And then, of course, everything just took off to other people. And because it's a lot of characters, it's like 50 characters of my book. So the podcast show timeline is before the time of my book, Mitzrayam, a memoir of a past life in ancient Egypt. So Rulin is a part of the timeline of the podcast. He did not come through when I wrote my book by that time Purchase Semenya aka me because it's my memoir these memories that came forth was a time where she was about 
to marry King Dama, which I brought Dama out in the future series of Naha and Princess Aminia, which was in this season seven. It's been a while. It's going to be a while that I bring them back. So if y'all didn't get to check it out, do check it out if you love it. And also check out my other, I got my other, I guess I'm on going on, but I love what I'm doing. Okay. On the sub stack. There's a link in the description. Do consider to go prime, okay? So that's what you're paying for. Extra content, extra access, interesting interviews. So do consider to, to subscribe and be a prime member. With that, you get access to free merchandise. You get access to me. You get access to additional stories, character breakdowns. They kind of really do a deep dive in understanding this wonderful world that are my memories and what I'm creating. So in this regard here, Ruland is on the podcast timeline. And so that's before really Princess Amelia was born. So that's why episode one states the title, Before the Time of Princess Amelia. That's the timeline before my book. And so Ruland comes out where he grew up with Queen Hagar. So it's one of those episodes that I really loved doing when it came through and going back and listening to it myself. Because <laughs> I'm just amazed, you know, the gift that God gave me to do this and for me to remember and so that's where Queen Hagar goes and talks to Ruin. So Ruling is like one of the tribal leaders. So back in ancient times, that's what they was called, aka you can call them almost close to kings, but nonetheless they were. And he loved Hagar before she met King Milan. He wasn't a king yet, but he was the son of one and he was gonna be crowned king, which back then they call them kings, not pharaohs of Egypt. But anyhow, that's how that happened. Happened, and that's the episode that he still loved her, but he understood that she chose him. So now we, so they never liked one another. So now we fast forward, and this is his response when he comes back of where he's had a speech, he's getting resources, and it's in front of all of these galactical leaders, right? That's where <laughs> memories. Um, so that's where Rulin is responding. So Rulin and Milan doesn't like one another because they both love the same woman, except Milan won and got her. So that's, that's basically what we're dealing with at the end of the day. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get into this, y'all. How about that? I gave you a little background story, but it's always good for y'all to go back and read and listen to all my episodes, all right? And join as a Prime member. Help a sister out, okay? Let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's begin. For my podcast show, Nichelle Anderson, Short Stories and Beyond. For this week of Molay Short Stories for Season 7, 2023 to 2024, entitled Episode 66, Rulin responds to the position of King Milan's speech as an Orion sets a new path. Opening scene. Within the new Aspiru and planet Tamat, on the western side of what is being called now the Sedan, but in future times of generations, Earth planet, we see Rulin, one of the main tribal leaders and a part of the council members, reading over a passport's paper of the core points to what was recorded and sent by the divinity messengers for those on Tamai of King Malan's speech and the star constellation Pleiades. In his main house hut on several several fields of land with horses, camels, and farming in the back way of his property, his four children play amongst the field hills and his wife cooking in the far room. He stands in his meeting room with several of his, of his lieutenants waiting for his response as he continued to read the message sent down to all Sudan travel leaders. He paces back and forth reading the contents as his long Jordan cape of bogan, a burgundy and green flap, flap in the wind as he went through as they sat at the long wooden table and several wooden chairs and decor fabric hangings on the wall stood about in the manner of knowing of this, of ruling, authority, Will the interconnection of the other key tribal leaders and their position to follow King Milan of Mitzrayam was disregarded as the position of his rule of Tamat. As the letter message recorded, King Milan is determined to find all that supported knowingly to the crown of Mitzrayam into the battle of before then. 
that moment. Wulin made it to his side table and window to his back. He sat in thought, not looking directly at them. Then he stood up and walked around one more time to gather his thoughts as they knew that he was upset. Then he turned to face them. I do not sigh with Mitraya, yet we must, as the forces of the other brethren of the Congo cancel might not all of them do so. Then one of the Lord tenants of him from all the battles before us said, It is that Sanel and his other brother up north that is the cause of this disloyalty amongst the tribal leaders, as his brother to the north has been dealing with the Orions, I hear. Those are the skies of the Orion star constellation, and this is where we are now, right in the middle of Mitzrayim, the crown under King Malun Ru, do not trust all of us at all. Wulin was in thought before he looked back at all of them. They all want our allegiance, but it seems Sinel is the main one that seems to speak for all of our tribal leaders, even if we don't agree of the Sedan. And what do we have to? Just then, there was a knock on the door to the room they were speaking in. Wulin allowed it to enter the person and it was his wife, announcing a representative of Sanel that he wishes to speak with them. Before Wulin could answer yay or nay, huh, it was Sanel himself that burst open into their space, his hair still rising taller than all that can see, and his usual stance of territory of everyone that completely engulfed the room. Even though he just had land on part of the south of the Sedan, he started to pace slightly back and forth, eyeing everyone in the room as he wanted to command, but Wulin paid no attention. He just nodded to his wife. That would be all, and they would talk later. She smiled and left, shrugging her shoulders, looking at Sinel's boldness, but knew Wulin would handle him. The representative of Sinel was actually coming in just then when Wulin Reich left. He was standing to the far right, eyeing everyone, a bit nervous, as his attendant stood up in rank in a protective move near Rulin. It was Rulin that spoke first. Proceed for this unannounced visit, Sanel. Then leave. Rulin threw up his arms in distaste of his manuka color long cape and magic belt to his pants flapped in the increasing wind that flew in through the window. I got the message from King Milan. Speech. And I need to know are you with the brothers of the South or not, Wulin? For your delay is causing distrust amongst those that follow me. And I need to know which you need to know not. Wulin walked around his wooden desk and roared at Sanel that made him back up, but quickly gained his footing to make sure everyone know he's not afraid. You have no right to justify, Wulin said in anger to him. A response sooner than which I am willing to give. So you just sit down or get out. If you're not willing to listen to the reason of my position of Kimalan's letter, Sanel slowly took a seat and his representative followed. And then Ruga's attendant sat down as well. Ruga started to pace back and forth, holding the papa's letter. And then he spoke. I will side with the Yuna council members. My vote is will be of the dawn, three scores, but let it be known, I do not favor the compromise outlined by King Milan. Is that clear? So now I made a noise of, hmm, and got up to leave with his representative that they made it outside and walked a distance to a cargo of carriages, camels, guards, not known of many in the area. And he got inside as the flap closed shut, and then there was the two of Orion. Sitting across, sitting across from Sanel and Ike of the Pleiadians, star cancellation. He was drinking some tea with a gold rim cup, holding a cream brown salsa, taking a sip, and then sat as the large caravan enclosing them, leaving their once parked area hidden from Mulan's property and for them to see. Hmm, Inky said. I gather Rulin is holding for his vote for now. But I deter he will side with the two against King Milan. Meanwhile, 
back in Plainings, we see King Milan walking hand in hand with King Haga, that is holding Princess Hannah's hand, as the family members walk behind that of Queen Mother Mana, Elder Grandfather Tahi, Ezra of Egypt, that will, in the coming generations, be the father of Naha. And also, we see following them the whole court of the royal family support of Mitraim, as in King Kohan of Zimbabwe, he was there as well. He will be the future stepfather of Dama and Danielle. And there was also some council members of the Congo of the Sudan back on Tamat. Down the corner, there are well wishes standing on each side, nodding and clapping, smiling at the royal Tamat Mitzrayan royal family as they walk past. To King Malan's left, we see a representative of the Inki rule of Palladians as they continue to approach their adjoining evening area for their meal before they trip back to the galactical trip back to Tamat. And the representative said, nodding and waving to the well wishes of the speech well done. There is talk, Malan, King Malan. There is talk, King Milan, all weight of your speech on Tamat. It is said that King Milan is very influential. King Milan nodded, still, as it was walking past many people that was observing and leaving in awe there. King Milan and some are not supportive and want something more in exchange for revealing any support to whom was behind the prior battle. We are willing to send more forces down to Tamat for influence as well of a collective agreement. King Malad is of the saying of the representative of the court of Akune as they walked together continuously down the corner of people on both sides watching them clapping and smiling and waving and cheering of the leadership of King Malad and his royal family. And then King Malad said to the representative of the king court, we will accept your proposal of the Okine to return in a joint effort to influence those weary of my leadership, of my leadership rule over Mitraim and Tamat. Queen Haga smiled and replied, concur, and it would be the force of collective to assure what was voted on long ago before the tribes formed such a disagreement to your rule, Milan. They all nodded as King Milan looked ahead, saying, Assure, it shall be. Meanwhile, the planet of Demonia, of star cancellation of Akutuas, in the moment of the young baby Owain boy, was born that name, Kishi, which will be featured in the book Mitrayam, a memoir of the past life of ancient Egypt. Timeline starts his new path as he kicks up his legs to touch his feet. With wide eyes, his parents, brother, to General Haini and his wife and children, along with the house they were living in, hiding from the officials of Narayan Varun and his wife, all were around the new baby boy when his parents said in an interesting statement to returning back to Hawaii. Haini tried not to go as he didn't want the officials and those against his ruling over the two to bother them or try to locate them on the Dumanu. But Lando continued that it would actually help Haini to return later as he could help in a watchful look and in the know to whom is moving in trying to get the star of Mitzrayam. Haini pondered and then Lando said with a convincing and non weary position of compromise you will still be here on planet Demai, honey, with your family that is safe. And just let me return to Orion with my new family in the Magnus cycle. That is a part to take place in the one Aspu that will not only be for the better of us from entering into the Orion Skies galaxy. us back at this point that is not known of them, of the Akuno council members. We will be untouched, we will be able to grow and to build another force of supporters that you will be able to return to Orion. Leonardo pointed to a map he wrote out on the table and it was new baby son Kishi. And the general Henny looked in amazement that his younger brother kept their old childhood map of the galaxies of the interconnected interstellar highways. And he looked at his brother as Kishi curled and chuckled playing with his mother's hand. The 
great General Henry said, You set the path to Hawaii, and I await your message of therein. Insane.